Hey guys, this is actually the second time that I'm recording this because <clears throat> I recorded this video actually last night and <laughs> the whole time the mute button was on. So I've got to record it again. But So this is our Saturday chat. Um... I have to apologize for my appearance and my lack of zip <laughs> because um, I haven't been feeling my best the last few days. Something has taken a hold of my stomach. Um, but anyhow, let me turn the fan off because I know that's going to buzz in the background. Um, all right, so. Let's see if I can. And I did it in record time too. It was only like a 25 minute video. So let's see if I can get through this. I'm drinking peppermint tea. And I have some stuff coming from Instacart. Some Gatorade and some other some medicine. Um, I have some. Let's do the personal stuff first. Um, personal update. Um, first of all, I want to say that, at least in part, I owe my renewal of gumption of, uh, I'm not sure what word to use for it, but I'm going to leave a link to Victoria Mary Clark's um, YouTube channel, because I don't think she gets enough views that would be my phone <laughs> um i don't think she gets enough you know views i don't think i don't think you guys a lot of, i don't think enough people realize what a blessing she is um i was watching her latest video and she was talking about you know being afraid to put yourself out there to make money for your wares and things you create I've always been afraid to put out my paintings, you know, I've always been afraid to advertise my books and things like that. Um, I, I do it, but I'm always, the thought is always in my head, it's not good enough. You know, it's not, um, nobody's going to want it kind of thing. Um, excuse me. Um, but. And not in, not so much in that area, but in the area of my daycare, which you guys know I've been struggling with, um, she kind of gave me, I kind of, it was just such a, her videos are, and her, her posts on Facebook, they're always, always so calming and so inspiring. And, but. The last video really inspired me to to really push the gas pedal on my daycare. I mean, not that I haven't been before, but I guess I had actually become, like, I was enjoying, on one hand, I was really enjoying the um, keeping the daycare at a minimum. I admit, it was easy days. I wasn't getting stressed, none of that stuff. But at the same time, I was financially struggling big time. I, it, all my savings got used and everything. And I, it was just getting to where I just, I, I wasn't making enough money. I had more going out than coming in. And that's never a good thing. Even when I canceled all of my extra stuff. And it's still, I had more going out than was coming in. And being that the world is, is so unbalanced right now, things are the way they are and so iffy. Finances are something that I think you really need to look at and that you really should get a hold of now uh, more than ever. And so I just decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to put this out there again. And I'm going to just suck it up and I'm going to enroll 
maybe ages that I really didn't want to enroll. Um, because some ages are a lot more work than others. And I did, and I enrolled four new kids in the last week. And so my income level is back to where it was pre-COVID. Now, it's still going to take me a month or two to get things called up, get things paid off, um, some personal debts I want to settle. Um, it's still going to take me a month or two to get all that, you know, all that straight and get, you know, credit cards paid off, that kind of thing. Um, but I feel good knowing that I'm now in a position to be able to do that. I'm no longer stressing. Now, the day, day, finances change in a daycare setting. You know, you, you lose kids, kids move away. Kids get old enough, they start school, they don't need you anymore. And the same thing is going to happen with the kids that I just enrolled. I know this. Um, but I have, I have, you know, plans for my future, especially when it comes to, I want to buy a house next year. And I can't or you know a year to year and a half and I can't do that if my credit isn't back where it needs to be if I don't have saved money you know for that all-important down payment you know and if I'm not making the income that you need to make to be approved for a, a house loan so there's things that I'm trying to get my ducks in a row you know um, but I took her I took the advice and just applied it to my daycare and it's one I'm even I'm even considering hiring uh, someone part time to come in and, and help because I think I'm going to need help. Um, but I'm, I'm at right now I'm just trying to figure out what I can afford, you know, and how many hours I can afford to have some because right now in Virginia, minimum wage if for someone with 100 employees or less is $11 an hour. Um, so I would have to pay someone that. And so I really couldn't have them here, you know, on a constant, you know. So I have to figure out my, the hours that I really, that's, that I really need someone, you know, and go from there. Um, but things are looking up. That's my point. <laughs> and so that's really good news. That's really good. Like I said, I don't have the zip that I would have because I'm not feeling, well, guys, I've lost eight pounds in two or three days time um i'm not complaining about that part that's for dang sure i think also something in my head also has kind of maybe i'm not ready to talk about this part but it does have to do with my eating or rather my lack of really wanting to eat um my weight isn't i don't want it to turn into like a problem um but i i just there's a goal i've been trying to reach for several years now and i just can't i actually got within three pounds of that goal um a few years ago and i don't know what happened I lost it really quick. That, I think that's for another video. So, all right. Anyway, so let's move on to, so that's very good. Let's see what's going on with my landlord situation. So, you guys remember I was really happy because he sent me a message on Facebook almost a month ago now saying that he was moving soon. That he was going to North Carolina to get the trailer for his to get his stuff out i never saw his trailer pull up i never there's no signs whatsoever of him moving right and the other thing i really need for my daycare is to be able to use i just spit and to be able to use that backyard you know it's it's important and that's going to help too the kids get their energy out and help you know my stress level stay down because they'll have you know, a place, a safe place to play. Right now, it's not safe because he's got, you've seen it, the junk out there. Um, and so he really needs to leave. 
So I spoke with my attorney and he sent him a letter, which he probably got yesterday, that um, he's got till the end of October now, whether he likes it or not, to have to be gone. Um, and if he doesn't, I will have no choice. Um, my attorney let him know that I'll have no choice but to um, to file suit, meaning I'm going to sue him for back rent because I'm paying rent for this place and he's here. I'm going to sue him for uh, electric be electric use because he's using my electric um, and for a breach of lease. So, and then my, my attorney's fees and all of that. So, he, he's best to just leave. And if he doesn't, he's going to owe me a whole heck of a lot of money. So, I ain't playing with this. Um, so, let's get to talking about... Um, Alright, so I'm, I'm looking at my notes, guys. So, uh, JD attended the... Uh, the Tashkent International Film Festival. And, uh, you know, I want to apologize, sort of apologize, because I'm not, you know, right, I don't like report on stuff that Johnny Depp does up to the minute, you know. And I'm just, it's, I love Johnny Depp. I love him as a person. Um, granted that, you know, I don't really know him as a person, but I support him. Always will. But I think there's a fine line between being a fan, supporting him, and being, I don't like to use the word obsessed, but I don't know what else to use. Um, and I know this, this happens with probably all celebrities. I've never been one. I have actually a celebrity friend. Um, Chris Frackens is, has become a friend to me. Um, he's a really sweet guy. He's a really down to earth guy. Um, if you too young to know who that is, um, think Blue Lagoon, the pirate movie. Um, I can't remember the name of it. He just recently did a, uh, one where he plays a preacher um, and he's just a, he's just an, uh, an all around down to earth guy. And, but, and he also, um, and I, I'm going to leave, I'm going to need to make myself a note. I'll, I'll leave a link to his, um, if I can find it again. Um, Chris's, uh, what do they call that? Driftwood art. Okay. Driftwood site so he so he makes pieces out of driftwood uh, he sent me one um two years ago he sent me a necklace a beautiful necklace that was made out of uh the black um coral that they gave him from the island where he did the blue lagoon and it got stolen i never never should have mentioned who made it or where it came from but it was stolen right out of my house. I'm pretty sure I know who did it, but whatever. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways. Yep. Um and uh So, uh, you know, right around that time we friended on Facebook and we messaged um uh quite a bit in the beginning. And, um, uh, not so much lately, you, you know, I'm, I'm just, I don't really talk to a lot of people, so that's, I'm working, honestly, uh, cause I, because I work so much, um, but yeah, so he's, he's a, he's a nice guy. My sister got upset once, uh, we were in, um, shopping Yankee Candle, and I've had other friends say they're like, well, I sent him a friend request and he wouldn't friend me. And I feel like they got upset with me over that. And there's not nothing I can do about that, you know. Um, but that to say that, I said that to say this. I've never been one to like 
get starstruck, I guess is the word. And part of that has probably just been that I, I just see that as a job. You know, if you're an actor, if you're famous or whatever, it's not a job I would ever want. Um, but that's how they make money. You know, that's their job. Um, I wouldn't want all that paparazzi nonsense. Nope. I like my privacy way too much. Even the little bit of privacy I get now, I treasure. <laughs> so... But what I what I'm trying to say in all this is that there's a there's a line there between being supportive and being a fan and then being obsessed. You know, um, I see these articles come out about Johnny Depp, uh, for instance, the one about his having a girlfriend. This, uh, according to several media, mainstream media sources. Um, he's dating someone named Joel, Jolie, Joel, I'm sorry, Rich. She was one of his attorneys from the UK trial, and she, I guess she was there during the Virginia trial as well. And um, immediately, you see, now I posted on Twitter personally, too, that, you know, I didn't, there's been so many things, you know, it, the media started questioning whether he was dating Camille Vasquez. And even then that upset I'm like, God, why would you do that to this woman? And again, I'm saying, why would you do that to this woman if he is dating her? Why would you put her in the spotlight like that? Amber Heard is narcissistic, which makes her dangerous. It makes her vindictive. She will stop at nothing to destroy any happiness that he may have. So whether it's true or not, I'm so like almost sickened by the the amount of attention it's getting. Um, that there's th because <sighs> first off, I want to say he doesn't owe us an explanation. He doesn't owe us anything by coming on and saying it is true or it isn't true. Um, just because somebody publishes something or makes a video about it does not make it true. So, you need to check sources. You know, I think the fact that, to my knowledge, he or his team has not responded to this, um speaks volumes to me it's either it's not true or it's mind your damn business so it's one of those and um either way you know if I, honestly if i were johnny depp's social whatever person or just a, a little angel whispering to his ear i would definitely advise him to keep any relationships so locked fort knox locked down because of Amber Heard. She will not only try to ruin his happiness. She'll try to ruin whoever he's dating. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying about that. Because his personal life is not our business. It's just not. Um, there are, there are the comments that you see. And I did want to bring this up too. When I was talking about not being obsessed. You can see the jealousy in some of the fans. And it's a little disturbing. You know. And I think. I don't know. I. It's you know. We're not teenagers. You know it's not like when I was. A teenager and I had Scott Baio's posters. On my bedroom walls. You know, <laughs> um, yeah, we're not kids, you know, so when you're a teenager, it's okay to be a little obsessed, I think, about a celebrity, but when you're grown, I just think there's a fine line between being obsessed and being a fan and being supportive. I didn't even come into this until I heard about what happened to him, because I happened to go through the abuse at the same, oddly enough, the same 
same time that he did. Um, mine ended May 31st, 2016. And so I kind of felt a connection, like a tie, spiritual connection, whatever you want to call it, because we're in our same, we're at the same time frame, healing time frame. And so it's kind of interesting for me to watch him continue to succeed. Um, and I look at my own life and I'm thinking, am I moving forward too? Yes, I am. So that, that you know, is, is encouraging as well. Um, but I also know, I also know because I am in that same time frame, that there are moments that he still has, I guarantee it, you know, moments to himself, moments when maybe he's talking to a, a close friend, where those traumas and those feelings surface. And worse for him, I think, because he can't can't get rid of her oh my god anyways let's move on it's already longer than yesterday's um so there's apparently there's a documentary out now with a bunch of lies about johnny depp and um i have not watched that one and i will not watch that one but i do want to say that there is a new documentary coming out by Boris Acosta called Johnny's Inferno. I think it's in, comes out in October. And it's about, my understanding is it's about Johnny's life from infant to now. So that I will watch because it looks, the description looks to be very Johnny positive and he needs more of that. Oh, you know, guys, there... There's a carnival in town this weekend, and I I wanted to go. I'm not much for the rides. I don't do rides, but I wanted to go so badly um, to get out of the house. Oh, I'm getting out of the house. My stomach isn't feeling good. I'm hoping when my Instacart order comes and I am, I get my Gatorade in me, that I will feel like getting out of the house. Um you can't i mean the carnival's in town you know guys like cotton candy <laughs> um of course i haven't eaten in in so long now that uh, it's been almost aside from four saltine crackers i haven't eaten since i think about 6 p.m thursday evening So, um, probably cotton candy is not the best thing to put in my body. All I know is it hit me. I felt such a pain in my, like, lower abdomen, like, my lower part of my stomach. Like, somebody was drilling a hole. And I took some medication. Pain went away, and it was gone. The stomach issues were gone until this morning. The stomach issues are back. Uh... Not as much pain, not barely there, but it's enough for me to know that I need more medication and I need to eat something. I know because I can't let myself get weak. I slept in till like ten thirty this morning, ten thirty, eleven o'clock this today. Um, but I know from past experience that if I just sleep and I don't eat and keep moving I'm going to get weak and with the new kids that I have I cannot get weak oh that's another thing I wanted to mention something about guys pray for the kids I enrolled yesterday because they're coming to me because just a month ago their mother was killed in a drunk driving accident uh, she was hit by a drunk driver they're two and three the little girl is in kindergarten and she knows she knows something is wrong i don't know if she knows what but i was talking with her grandparents and um yesterday and we you know we don't the 2 and 3 year old just think they've been at their grandparents house for an extended period of time you know 
and they'll grow up and probably never, you know, it'll just be life as they know it, you know, they're not going to remember their mom, but for now, you know, they have lost their mom and at where they are now, they are already showing signs of something wrong, you know, acting out, how they have some anger issues. I saw that when I interviewed, especially one of them, and it breaks my heart. Um, and so these kids need some extra TLC, and they were referred to me by someone else, you know, that knows me. They know my nature. They know I, and before they left, both kids gave me a hug and both and this happens to me a lot really the parents or grandparents you know they are like wow that's a big deal they don't like anybody and they were referred to me by a parent whose son doesn't like anybody but he does like me and so when these kids hugged me before they left you know the grandparents were first of all I think relieved to know that they were coming to the right place um as kids know you know they sense your nature, and if you're if you're fr if you show them that frustration and agitation, they're going to feel it too. And when they're already going through something traumatic, they know something's wrong. They just don't know exactly what it is. They don't know that they're not going to see mommy anymore. You know what I mean? And it breaks my heart for them. So my job, as I see it, is to shower them with love. To try and help some of the healing, you know, and to make this a stable routine for them, a stable part of their life, you know, coming here till they start school, anyways. So, um, and it's usually the more difficult ones. <laughs> that you know that have problems that I end up being the most attached with speaking of I don't know if you guys remember me telling you about a daycare child I had when daycare was like in the beginning stages the early years and um I had this one difficult child who would kick me and scream and pick up chairs and throw them the kids used to run into the playroom to hide from her when she would be acting out like that and sadly enough, I worked with that child for seven months. Um, but unfortunately, at the time, I, I don't feel like I had enough experience in dealing with that type of whatever trauma she was going through or whatever, whatever she was dealing with. And um, I ended up having to terminate. And I wasn't the first one. She had been through two daycares before that terminated because of her behavior. Well, this child <laughs> rides up on her bike yesterday as daycare closed with a friend of hers. And it took me a second to recognize her. And then she she's like, Miss Dreama, I miss you. Can I give you a hug? And I was like, of course. And I've been keeping up with her on Facebook because I'm still friends. You know, well, I'm still Facebook friends with her parents. And um, I've been keeping up with her. And I've been so proud of her growth and her maturity level. And this was a different child that I saw yesterday she said she wanted to bring her friend to meet with me and um it was such a wonderful a wonderful reunion and come find out she only lives a couple blocks away from me so you know she planned they're out of school for two weeks so she they'll I'm sure I will be seeing them um during this school the break from school and uh and I knew, it kind of made me feel like, okay, now I know how my, my old school teachers felt when I would go to visit them. It's heartwarming. It touches you in a way that I just can't explain. You know, to know that despite the fact that I had to basically kick her out of my daycare because she was a danger to the other kids, she still, she comes up and stream, I miss you, I love you, and she still thinks kindly of me and i i've been keeping up with her like i said on facebook i i it's those that i worry about the most you know but you know at the time i could only do so much you know and again i wasn't as experienced as i've i am now 
Um, and it just, I can't tell you what it did for me. It just, it reaffirmed for me that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing in this life. I am where God wants me to be, you know, in my path, on my, my journey. I am taking care of children, and that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And I can't look at it, even on the bad days. If there's, you know, things get out of hand, things go crazy, we get frustrated. Even on those days, I can't, I can't let that get to me, you know. I have to remember one, hey, this is paying my bills. The financial stress I was feeling is, is at least for this season, gone. And um, and yes, the reward. Like a child, I've had other day kickers come back and visit me before with their parents. But I've, that's the first time I've ever had one come on their own you know just ride your bike on up to my house and, <laughs> and come see me you know and I'm sure it won't be the last time I'm sure at some point when they're old enough they'll be driving their own cars and coming to see me you know and I guess that's the legacy I'm going to leave behind in this world I don't have kids of my own so I'll never have grandkids um, and I always felt like I got cheated somehow, but I am leaving a legacy behind. You know, this daycare, the kids that I have been taking care of over the last six years that have come and gone, those are the ones that they're going to remember me. You know, and and they're going to come see me, you know, over the years as they grow up. And I'm going to absolutely love that and watching them grow. It just did my heart really, really good for her to come and see me and to tell me that she misses me and to see her growth. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And that, that is worth more than all the money that I can make from doing this. Because that is confirmation that you're on the right road. Let me get this video put together and out to you. <laughs> God bless. You guys have a good weekend. And I'll see you in the next video.